Welcome to the Manic Metallic Podcast, where we respect fashion's past, analyze fashion's present, and get excited about fashion's future. I'm Liberty Gaiman, founder and creative principal of fashion media company Manic Metallic. Several times per week, I'll bring you episodes about exciting things happening in fashion, discussion about current issues facing the industry, and the places and people that have made the fashion industry great. Be sure to subscribe to our newsletter and follow us on Instagram at the Manic Metallic Podcast and at Manic Metallic, both linked in our show notes. Now, let's get into today's episode. Welcome to the Manic Metallic Podcast. I'm Liberty, your host. For the fifth episode of our Who Is series, we decided to spotlight someone that's different from our first four entrants. This entrant is a man, and he is primarily a footwear designer. In addition to creating well-known products himself, he has worked with many well-known names. Our fifth Who Is series entrant is Vince Camuto. Vince Camuto, his full name being John Vincent Camuto, was born June 4, 1936 on Manhattan's Lower East Side in New York City. His father, Sicilian artist Luigi Camuto, passed away when Vince was two. His mother, seamstress Luis Singa Camuto, was left to support the family. He attended Seward Park High School in New York City and began working at Manhattan luxury shoe store I. Miller at age 18. Here, he started as a shoe repair clerk first before moving into sales. In the early 1960s, Camuto worked for Sudbury Shoe Company, which was his first time getting a taste of what shoe manufacturing was like. In 1969, he began working with Japanese-owned, New York-based Bank of Sumitomo to develop shoe manufacturing in Brazil for the Japanese market. He designed and imported private label shoes. A fortuitous connection was to come from working in this position. It was here that Vince Camuto met Jerome Fisher, who go on to become his business partner in the early 1970s. In 1978, Fisher and Camuto formed their own company, Fisher Camuto, the predecessor to Nine West Group. The company's offices were at Nine West 57th Street in New York, which is where the eventual name came from. Fisher Camuto saw much success over the years, so much so that it went public in 1993. Vince Camuto, having served as the company's founder and creative director, was appointed CEO that year. He stayed in that position until 1999, when Nine West was sold to Jones Apparel Group for $900 million. Two years after the sale of Nine West, the entrepreneur started Camuto Group with his wife Louise in August. In 2002, the group launched four footwear brands for Dillard's department stores, Antonio Milani, Gianni Bini, Nurture, and Michelle D. I want to take a quick moment to tell you about Manic Metallic's recent product. Do you like fashion? Does it matter to you beyond just entertainment value? Well, Manic Metallic is a fashion media company that creates audio, written, and video content that supports our ethos that fashion is an art, discipline, and societal force for change. We recently published a fashion ebook titled Alternative Fashion Capitals, a survey of 20 cities of emerging thought leadership. In it, we detail 20 cities beyond just New York, Milan, London, and Paris that have thriving fashion scenes, and we dive deep into what they have to offer, including shopping districts, specific places to shop, brands, events, fashion organizations, fashion publications, and universities and colleges. These 20 cities have a lot to offer the world with regards to the fashion industry, and Manic Metallic is determined to share their stories. We'd love for you to consider purchasing this fashion ebook and for you to join our growing community via our website, social media, newsletter, and podcast. For more information on the ebook and where it can be purchased, please visit manicmetallic.com forward slash products. We look forward to hearing from you. Now, back to the podcast. That same year, Commuto Group acquired footwear licenses for BCBG, Max Azria, and BCB Girls. 2005 saw Commuto launching his namesake footwear line, Vince Commuto, under Commuto Group. Additionally, the group bought the master license for pop star Jessica Simpson's brand that year and built it into a billion-dollar business in seven years. A year later, in 2006, Camuto Group partnered with another big name on shoe production, designer Tory Burch. 
Camino collaborated with Birch on her wildly popular Reva Ballet Flat. In 2008, Vince Camuto became the first corporate affiliate member of the CFDA. This entailed mentoring CFDA members about building business partnerships. 2009 brought Lucky Brand Jeans footwear and Kenzie Girl footwear into Camuto's fold. Camuto launched VC Signature a collection of accessible luxury carrying tasteful classic shoes and handbags in 2012, the same year that he became a member of the Council of Fashion Designers of America. Vince Camuto passed away on January 21st, 2015 of prostate cancer at his home in Greenwich, Connecticut. He was survived by his wife, Louise Camuto, and his five children. During his life, Camuto supported multiple charities, including the Ronald McDonald House, the Domestic Abuse Awareness Foundation, and St. Jude's Hospital. He and his companies received multiple awards from Footwear News, including a Company of the Year nod in 1991 for Fisher Camuto, a Retailer of the Year award for Nine West in 1994, and a personal election to the Footwear News Hall of Fame. What was so fantastic about Vince Camuto is that he was this business powerhouse that seemed to have a sharp natural instinct for knowing what his customers wanted and how to deliver that to them in a way that was both stylish and affordable for them, the consumer, and very profitable for the company. That's the line that many failed to balance successfully during the times that we're in right now. Many in the industry today concentrate so much on how to create their products first and how to make their potential customers want them second. Companies that will be successful will know how to give people what they want in a way that allows them, by them I mean the company, to retain creative control of their business. If you are in the business of selling apparel, or even if you want a masterclass on how to build a profitable business in the fashion industry, in whatever form that that may be, I highly suggest reading more about Fence Commuto's life. That's it for today. We hope you'll tune in to our next episode. See you next time. Thanks for listening. If you got value out of today's episode, it'd mean a lot to me if you rate, review, and subscribe to the Manic Metallic Podcast. Be sure to tell all of your fashion-inclined friends and co-workers about the podcast as well. This will really help us to spread our message about fashion being an art, discipline, and force for societal change. And don't forget to stay in touch with us by subscribing to the Manic Metallic Newsletter and following us on Instagram. Feel free to reach out to us through either of those means. I'd love to hear from you. I'll link these all in the show notes. You're the best. See you next episode.